How's it going, everyone? Uh, Pastor Nate here at Wake World Church and Wake World Ministry, also a part of the Axe Movement, um, also um, a part of um, Slash, <laughs> um, United States of America, Home Churches International. Um, I want to do, I'm not going to continue doing the Becoming the Called series this week, uh, being that it is um, the, our Independence Day. I've actually titled it the 4th of July sermon. It really needs to be called an Independence Day sermon slash speech thing. And um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, this is recorded. Uh, if I'm going to title it, Have We Forgotten or Slash We Should Never Forget. Um, this is this some things God has put on my heart that I want to address. I'm going to just try to do this within 15 to 20 minutes. I just ask you to hear me out because this is addressed to my country. Um, Please hear me out. Um, starting off with, you know, people have talked about that um, the pilgrims, when really, if you want to know the correct term in history of the pilgrims, which are actually called purists, when they came over from England um, trying to escape King George, the tyrannical king at that present time, uh, there's reasons why for that, that they don't teach at school anymore that I'm going to teach you today. But people say that, you know, we invaded Native American land. You know what? This may be true. And it is true that they did migrate from, uh, the, the people of Europe did migrate over here. Um, but you know what? Uh, uh, we still, there's there's been more good that's came out of this country than there is bad. And I'll tell you this firsthand, I know Native Americans, uh, I myself have Native American blood in me and I went to an all Native American job corps um, that love the American flag and fly it proud. They know the history. But I want to ask people that ask the questions, how are we, you know, how, how is this fair to them and, you know, and so forth. But let me ask you this. Yes, they did invade, or I want to say invade, but came to. The British started to come over a little while after that as more people came and created the colonies. 13 original colonies on the coastline basically and a little bit into uh, the eastern part of the United States um, but let me ask you this if we allowed a tyrannical king to be a dictator over us uh, uh, what would have happened to the Native Americans then because if we failed if if, if, if we the American people I'm just going to put it like that fail at that point in time because they are part of this nation just as much as we are it's just the history of it if this nation failed at that time, what happened to the Native Americans? The British would have just ran right through. No offense to Britain and England today. I know you guys aren't like that anymore anyways. They would have destroyed them. But instead, which they don't teach that often, Native Americans and colonialists, for some Native Americans, some, some tribes, stood with the, the colonies to fight against King George and his tyrannical, or his tyrannical rules and armies and so on and so forth. So just ask yourself that question. If that didn't happen, what would America be like today? So that, that's all being said. Continuing on, um, every culture has had a dark past. They, they did things or slash doing things. They allowed things slash allowing things, meaning present. And our nation, again, has some dark history. But the good outweighs the bad. But again, so do other civilizations, past and present. But hear this. Just like other civilizations, people that are divided against themselves are why nations fall. Not necessarily the governments are why the nations fall, but the people that are divided against themselves. See, a tyrant needs division. They need the they they need if they create division within the people, and man, it's just easy pickings. They just they just run over them at that point in time. The reason why nations fall is because the, the people are divided against themselves, not just so much the the, the government and the rulers. And because there is no unification. God's word says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, Knowing the thoughts he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. No city or house divided against itself will stand. Keeping this in the context, Jesus is talking about the ca casting out demons. Um, because the Pharisees are mocking him at this point in time. They're basically saying, you use demons to cast out demons. Jesus is like, that's stupid. You're saying that. Satan is using his own, you're saying that Satan and his demons are using his own demons to cast out other demons? And you're saying that to me, who is holy, the Messiah, like, do you, you see and hear how stupid you sound? Anyways, um, just keeping that in context, but nonetheless, that rings true. A kingdom or a country divided against itself will not stand. 
Look at neighborhoods. Look at families, man. When they're divided against itself, what happens? They divide. They divide completely. They fall apart. In Galatians chapter five, thir uh, verses thirteen through fifteen, it says this: "For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word or verse." You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But listen to this. But if you bite and devour one another, then I want you to think of our country this past eight years, nine years, really these last uh, um, four years, uh, how many times we've had uh, riots break out and why we've had them break out. I want you to picture this and then what's going on presently. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Look at our nation now. And again, let's keep it in the context that the scripture is talking about freedom, but the freedom that Jesus Christ gives us all, that ultimate freedom. And I tell you, this is the most important thing because freedom starts at the cross. Where Jesus Christ paid for our sins so that we won't have to be slaves of this world or its twisted ways. And we'd be set free from our sins and given a new life through Jesus. I'll tell you, I, I tell you this first because, again, this is our ultimate freedom, people. I, I can't stress that enough. Freedom starts at the cross. But going on to back to what, what I was saying, and this is coming from a movie, it's a quote. And, and, and if you really look at the beginning part of the speech in that movie, it, it, it kind of goes on to say what it's talking about. Um, just keep that in context, but it, it rings true. It's from the movie 300 Rise of the Empire. Freedom is an idea. Let me take that a step further. Freedom, uh, or t let me this, uh, it is so true, it's an idea, a way of life that if forgotten, let me read that again. Freedom is an idea, a way of life. If it is for God, if it isn't thought for, it'll fade away. In other words, freedom is an idea that only exists by those who live it and fight for it. Let me give an example of what I mean by why I say that when I say live it or fight for it. Not necessarily people, um, I'm not just saying our Leos, our military, our EMTs, our firefighters. I mean, uh, those that are preserving our way of life, our freedom. I'm saying us, we the people as well. Because if we forget, if we don't live the freedom that was given to us, our independence, our rights that were given to us, first by God and also by the founders of this country. You want a good movie, go and watch um, uh, Monumental. Well, I was starting to say that, I think, at the beginning of the sermon. Sorry, here. Uh, uh, by Kirk Hammer called Monumental. Go look at the Liberty Matrix, the true foundation of how this country ran for so long and it's never talked about again. It was, it was going, I mean, and our country did flourish for a very, very long time, but I ask you to look at it now. The more and more we turn away from God, when we turn to this world, again, we were a nation that followed God first. Let's just ask you to hear me out on this. But going back to what I was saying, the, the, talking about um, freedom is an idea that is only kept alive by those who live it. I watched Jesse Waters and Mark Dice. Um, they go and question uh, people around America. And they ask them something. Now, I'm no history major, okay? Uh, I, I'm not the most brilliant guy. and I'm trying to um, go deeper into the foundation of, um, of our country the way it was then and you know so I could see how it was then to see where we're at now and how we can go back to some things because I think that would help us tremendously um, they go around and ask some pretty simple questions and the sad thing is is this and I encourage you to go go check it out yourself some of the most simple questions Americans can't even answer they've never heard it before you know another way you take over a country? Or a country is taken over? People forget about where they came from. They forget about the history that made 
their country so great. The cost of what it took and the people that made it possible. Let me give you an example. Mark Dice went around asking people how many stars are on the American flag. And I understand that the flag has changed many, many times, but it still represents the same thing it represents, and I'm going to talk about that next. They asked him how, He asked how many stars are on the flag. Nobody really got it right. But the, you know what the ones who got it right, that nobody really got it right, he, the, the Americans, very, very few, like, they guessed. They guessed came close, but the ones that got it right the first time were people vacationing here from another country, which I applaud them. That's awesome. But it's it just, like, seriously, our own people couldn't answer 50. And then he asked the other question, okay, what does that stand for? What are the 50? They don't know. It stands for the states. It stands for the Americas United. The United States of America. Good thing you didn't ask them about the stripes. How many of those are on there? But again, the people outside of our country vacationing can answer it. You know, I watched one by Jesse um, uh, Jesse Waters. I even I saw one by uh, Mark Dice. I think he did last uh, um, Independence Day, July 4th. He asked people why they celebrate July 4th. And he said it just like that. He didn't say Independence Day because that's exactly what it is. They can answer it. He did that again this year. And one lady even said that is our, our – um, I think she even said Independence or Freedom in the Civil War. Oh, come on. I mean, it, it, just some people couldn't even answer it. Going on here. A quote said by many people is in sometimes in different ways, but it says this, those who forget about the past slash history are doomed to repeat it. Those who forget about the past slash history are doomed to repeat it. Our nation used to be one that was set apart from the rest of the world. We were like no other nation. That is why our nation was great. First, because, again, we gave reverence and served God first. He came first. In all things we did, he came first. I don't care if you're an atheist, a deist. Again, I don't care. You refuse to look at when those days were to where we are now. And you see the difference. You see what's going on. Let me give an example of something real quick because, again, our nation used to be one that was set apart from the rest of the world and still kind of is. But I ask you this, how long is that going to last? Let me give you another example that Mark Dice did in a video. He went around having people sign a, a fake petition. And bear with me here just a, a, about five, ten more minutes, guys. A fake petition about changing the American flag. And I, I do not joke on this. Go watch the video yourself about signing a fake. It was basically he made a fake petition going around asking people to sign so that we can get a, a, a new American flag. It goes a little bit further than that. Quote, unquote, this is what he said. Signing a fake petition to change the American flag. He's basically going around. We signed this petition so we can get. Uh, we want a new American flag because it re represents racism and so on and so forth. But he said these exact words over and over and over and over again. And the people were just looking at him like, uh-huh, okay. He said exactly these words for a new world order. We want a new American flag for a new world order, a one world government, in other words. And people were just like, yep, I want that, uh-huh. You want to talk about invisible chains of slavery again. You want to talk about repeating history again. You know what the sick thing is, though? There really is talk about people trying to change our American flag. Legitimate talk about wanting to change our American flag. Let me tell you something. No. <laughs> I will never fly that flag as my country's flag. My stores, my, my stars on my flag will always be flying forward, and my flag on my wall will always fly true. That will always be the American flag. And for those in the midst of people um, uh, uh, doing protests of burning our flag, let me just let me just let me just read something that comes from my heart here. 
people to just say that the American flag is just a, co a cloth and it means nothing. I want you to set aside the corruption and the politics and business. That flag represents we the people in this great nation. It represents freedom that we live every day. And many have died for. It stands for a united people. In a country, though united, it is fading. There is hope. For the past month, I have recited in front of my, I have recited the Pledge of Allegiance. And in fact, I'm going to do that real quick. Join with, with me if you have a flag in your home. I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under you, God. Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. And yes, I did say you, God, instead of under God. And I did that for a reason. For the past month, I recited the Pledge of Allegiance almost every single morning. And I've stood before our flag and I've saluted it while the American anthem played because I want to learn the lyrics. I want to learn the fold. It's not just like a two minute song. It's actually a lot like almost 10 minutes long. But anyways, I want to learn the lyrics like it's the back of my hand. But the reason why I do this is because I'm pledging to God, even though my country is becoming more godless, I will stand against that current. Hear me on this. I will stand against that current and stand to keep it a nation under God. Everywhere my shadow touches, it is a nation under God. As long as my, as long as my arms will reach, wherever my feet tread and where my voice is heard, it is a nation under God. Because government and business don't make a nation, the people do. And even if I stand alone, and let me tell you something, I don't. I am an American. I am what makes a nation under God. And will be as long as my soul is in my body. I pledge to God that. That I will always try to keep this nation to be one that is under God. I will keep him first in all things that I do. And I will encourage others to and try to get that back instilled, even if it's in my community. I pledge to God that wherever I go, it will always be a nation under God because I'm a part of this nation. The hope I speak of, most importantly, is God because he is forgiven and we have, we have forgotten how he has blessed this great nation. We have forgotten he has protected us because we are, or let me read this again. He has protected us because we were a nation set apart from the world. Were a nation set apart from the world because we trusted in God, feared and loved him. Were, but I also see hope in the people. Though there are few of us, I still see hope. And together, we don't have to be were, but we are a nation under God. No matter what happens, we are a nation under God. God's word says that if you go to Second Chronicles in the, in the Old Testament, and this is my prayer for my country, if it's not in our, our politics, that it would be within the people. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Um, yeah. Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. And it says this. If my people who are called by my name. And again that's why I say this is a nation under, under God. If my people who are called by my name. Humble themselves. Pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. That I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. That is my prayer that we turn back to God. I know the majority of the leaders won't, but we the people can and will. In closing, I encourage you to go and read President George Washington's inaugurational address, the first president of this country. Again, Mark Dice and, and Jesse Walters ask people that they can't even they can't even answer that. Uh, the first inaugurational address. 
He talks about following God and God's morals and praying and a warning. And for people that say he was a deist or an atheist, you are so wrong. Go read upon the, the when he talks about his visions, like the three perils. The, sorry, three. I went like that. Three. You didn't see that. The thumb's kind of like, it's kind of, anyways. Three perils. Um, which the first one was a revolutionary war. The second one was a civil war. And the third one, um, I mean, the, of course, he wasn't alive during the civil war, but many believe that's what it was. But the third one is unclear. But let me just tell you something that I feel with inside of me. We're seeing the third one. But there's nothing after. Go check up, uh, go read up on his visions. Um, George Washington was a man that actually prayed a lot. He um, he went to church, and let me just let me just uh, in these in these closing points here. Did you know that President George Washington went to church right after his oath uh, he took to be president? made his inaugurational speech, he went to church. Let me tell you some history on that. That church that church still stands today. I'm going a little bit over my time here. I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up. That church still stands today, folks. Well, let me give you the history on it. It was built during the colonial's time, the, fir the first 13 colonies on the eastern side of the United States. Um, it was around the time when the British were starting to come in and make their presence known, um, when uh, King George was starting to be that tyrannical king again and, and wanting to tax people and so on and so forth. Um, it was then used as a, a military base by the British during the Revolutionary War time. It was... Um, basically destroyed um, during the Revolutionary War time and, and was rebuilt. The same time it was rebuilt is when President George Washington swore oath into office as being the first president in the United States. And he went into um, service, the, the church service for a divine sermon, it's, it's titled, when that church was reinstated the second time. Let me tell you something. That church is one of the oldest churches in this country. It goes deeper than that. It's definitely the oldest church in New York. But it's also one of the very few buildings left standing right next to Ground Zero. And it should have been destroyed, people. Let me tell you something. That is one of the few standing buildings on Ground Zero, literally right next to it. And it should have been destroyed, yet it is still standing. And people during 9-11 ran into that for refuge, for security, for protection. Still stands today. You know what that tells me? Even the month of the, amongst our country's destruction, we can still find hope in God. That we can run to Him and for His protection and His security. There still is hope. And he is our hope, most importantly. People, we need to unite again. Because we're literally no longer, I think, becoming united. There's even people in other countries that do not think we have freedom in our country anymore. Literally from their own mouths. Do not think we have, we have freedom in this country anymore. You know what a sad statement that is. But how true it is starting to ring. But I refuse to allow that to live. I will live this freedom that was given to me. But let me tell you something. We are becoming divided. There is even talk of some states. I know this has been talked about since the re-election of, of um, Obama. Um, there are people still talking about seceding from the Union, meaning they will no longer be a part of the United States. They will be their own country. Basically, like back in the Revolutionary War days that, you know, it was known as the Americas. But what united us was in that war. And after, we became the United States. 
because we declared our independence from anyone else that tried to be ruler over us. But if we become divided, we will fall. But let me tell you the one thing. Let me give you this hope. And I want you to catch this. And I want you to catch this. Please catch this. The thing that unites us is the cross of Calvary that Jesus Christ went on. That is the one thing that will always unite us because that's our ultimate freedom is what he gives us as salvation. God will be with us if we turn to him. Just like it says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, I'm going to say it again. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Again, I don't know how many leaders will do this because of the day and age that we're in, but we the people can. If we turn to him, everything in this nation was founded on. Most important was God. If we turn back to that, we need to turn back to that because this nation is changing into something it should never have become or becoming. You know, I was praying today in my closing uh, points here. I was, I was praying today while I was walking to work and I asked God just a simple question. God, what do you want of my nation? What do you want of my people? What do you want of us Americans? Again, what, what do you want us to do to, to be back with you? And he spoke as clear as day two simple things. Repentance and reverence. I'll never forget the freedom that Jesus Christ gives me on the cross. Gave every single one of us. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me just let me just do an altar call here real quick. God's word says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Who Jesus Christ is is God that came down and dwelt in the flesh. It says his son, okay, that he sent down to be our um, petition, our petition for sins, our reconciliation for our sins, our forgiveness of sins, that he died on a cross, a cross that we should have went on. We should have died on. He poured his wrath on his son, a part of his self, instead of pouring it on us again. He wanted to reconcile us with him instead of just wiping us out again. It grieved him the first time. This time he said, no. I want, I want to be reconciled with them. I want to build that relationship with them again. The only way to do that is to free us from our sins. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. If you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and that's exactly what he is, the Lord and Savior. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, that you believe within your heart that he died and rose again, he died for your sins, and, and with that you repent of them, and you believe that he rose again, giving you new life through that resurrection. Because that's the most important part, man. If he died, so what? He was, a, he was a good man that died for something. But the resurrection is what has power in that. And it is more than the historical documents in the Bible. There's other historical documents saying that he did raise again. And I'm telling you this right now, that if you confess again that you believe within your heart that he died for your sins and he rose again defeating the grave, you have new life through him. And with that, I encourage you to invite him into your life and give him your life to lead your life and you will be saved. He gives you that freedom, but I also will never forget those that believed in God, that fought for and founded what we have in this country. I will never forget the independence and the freedom that was given to me. The verse in closing of this sermon. If you go to 2 Timothy, New Testament, chapter 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. I'm going to mess here with my hat. I don't know if I want to hold on to it or let it go. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Let me tell you why I use that verse, people. Because even if this country turns away from him, he's still going to be God. The earth's still going to continue to spin until he says it's time to stop. But I thank God for that, man, that he 
even when I am faithless against him, even when my country is faithless against him, completely dis is disobedient to him, he still is going to remain faithful. And in that, I tell you this, he's always forgiving. And he always wants us to turn back to him. Pray that God blesses every single person that watches this. Your families are blessed that you have reconciliation if you have troubles within your families. But most of all in this nation that we would unite again. Join together or we will die. That God will bless this country. And with that, may God bless the USA. God bless you all. Have a great week. And don't forget it's not July 4th. It's Independence Day.